Welcome to or welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I am going to be telling you five things about me that you probably don't know. I'm working with NCS on this video, so thank you so much for sponsoring this. This is in partnership with their No We Can campaign. I will leave a link down below with some more information about the campaign and also if you want to sign up to NCS this summer. But like I said, yeah, all information will be in the description box below. But I thought it'd be really interesting to tell you five things that you don't know about me. You might have some surprises here and yeah, I just thought what a fun video to film, especially because there's quite a few of you who are new to my channel. NCS is a four week program that typically runs in the summer or October half term in England and Northern Ireland for 16 to 17 year olds. So if you haven't already been on NCS and you're kind of in that age category and in that area, there'll be a link down below about booking your place for this summer. So NCS is all about working with a team and kind of overcoming challenges, which I think is really important, particularly at this age. So the No We Can campaign is all about proving people wrong and saying that as a young person, you can do this and I am capable of doing this. So my example that I've touched on before is kind of proving to people that I can do YouTube. I started at such a young age and back then people didn't think it would go anywhere and I kind of think I've proved people wrong and it's actually been somewhat successful so that's kind of like a real life example of no we can and you're probably sat there thinking of something that you've done that people probably thought you couldn't do which is just a great example of the whole campaign NCS is promoting this year so like I said if you haven't booked a place for this summer on NCS a link will be down below along with all the information and a link to my assumptions video if you want to check that out too Okay, so I've got the things written on my phone because I don't want to forget what I actually was going to tell you guys. So the first thing you probably don't know about me is that I'm gluten free. Unless you follow me on probably Twitter, you probably wouldn't know this. I've been gluten free now for literally a year tomorrow as I'm filming this. So on the 8th of February will be my one year gluten free anniversary. Um, I'll insert a picture here of when... I first became gluten free and all the stuff that I bought. But yeah, um, if you didn't know, I'm not celiac but I have some form of allergy to gluten. Um, we did a lot of tests at the doctors and it came back negative saying, no, no, you don't have celiac, but all my symptoms kind of disappeared when I did give up gluten. I used to get really, really bad stomach cramps, headaches, things like that. Um, I showed a lot of signs that would suggest I was celiac, but the test didn't. Um, but yeah, it's almost better for me not to eat gluten. So for a year now, I have been gluten free. I will admit there have been times where I have eaten, you know, like a gluten based bread or pasta or pizza if I needed to, because I will say, especially when you go abroad, they don't cater very well in some places. I've been in America recently and on most menus in the UK, they will stipulate what's in it. And in America, I didn't really see any of that. Um, I kind of had to figure it out for myself or kind of suffer basically um but yeah i'm gluten free like i've just said like 50,000 times and yeah let me know if you are too or if you're dairy free or anything like that i have found this past year to be really interesting seeing what's out there i will say that the best places to go out and eat are italian chain restaurants so places like ask bella italia pizza express those kind of places is easy they're really good at catering for gluten free needs and um, and you get a sticker with your food, which always is appreciated. Second fact about me is that I hate flying. I also hate going on boats, um, but flying, I just have this fear, like I hate takeoff basically. I just hate takeoff. I have this fear that as soon as you take off, the thing's gonna come back down or you can't take off or something. I will admit though, I have got better at it. I have become a much more, not frequent flyer, but chilled out flyer, I'd say. The more I've flown, the better I've got. I recently did obviously an eight hour trip to New York and then it was six hours back and I will say I was pretty chilled out apart from when it was very very turbulent and bumpy um but short haul flights are good but anything over like four hours I will say I get a bit reckless restless I get a bit stressed um but yeah I would say it's improving but I also hate boats I actually think I hate boats more than flying now I hate being in the sea where you can't stand and it's so deep and I think this kind of roots back to when I was about five we went to Ibiza on a holiday and we went on this boat like a last bottom and it was quite choppy and I didn't really like it and then about five years ago I want to say four or five years ago I went to Croatia with my family and we went on this boat for the day and there was like eight of us um because I went with like my cousins and everything 
and we got to like this other island that i don't remember the name of but it was like literally a restaurant and a shop and people obviously just parked up and they went swimming and stuff and we came back from lunch and the guy whose boat it was said that it's broken down so we could either stay overnight bearing in mind we had nothing literally just nothing um because it was a day trip or we could get a boat back and so we were like oh we'll get the boat back oh my god that was literally the worst thing i'd ever been on it was so choppy it was like one of those speedboat things that just go like this in the water and no life jacket or anything and of course see you're in the middle of nowhere because it's just the sea and it was just the worst thing ever so i think i do hate boats more than flying now but yeah give me a train or a car any day and i'm fine a fact about me that i hope you know but in case you don't is i prefer cats over dogs I cannot tell you how many people are dog people in this world. I mean, I think more people probably prefer dogs, but I am such a cat person, okay? If you gave me a cat here and a dog here, I would, like, leave the dog to one side and just take the cat, okay? I have two black cats, Cece and Skittle. Before that, I had two black cats as well, um, Domino and Cookie, who have both passed away. Um, but, yeah, my family loves cats i mean my brother he would love a dog and my dad obviously would really like a dog as well because he grew up with them um but i'm such a cat person like oh black cats are my favorite i think you can see in the background i've actually got a calendar just full of black cats i had one last year and i was like i'm gonna get another one this year so as you can see this is february right now and like that's so cute um i'm not like against dogs completely no my neighbor's got a dog and it's fine but if you gave me the choice i would choose a cat i think it's because when I was about two, I was in the park and there was these two massive dogs and they got left for lead. And as a kid, you're like running around and then all of a sudden they started chasing me and it freaked me out completely. So I think that's kind of where my hatred started, my fear of dogs started. And I've kind of overcome that fear. But if you leave me in a room with a big dog that's going to jump up and touch my shoulders, I am out. Like, get me out of there. No way. I, I cannot deal with that. Small dogs fine you know my grandma had a dog um my friends have got dogs but if your dog's gonna jump up on me and start licking my face or anything like that get me out like that freaks me out the fourth fact about me is that i started making youtube videos when i was 14 but i actually had a blog before that um so unless you've been an og subscriber and you've been here since day one you probably won't know so i started making videos i think it was back in 2014 i want to say so i wasn't even 14 no, it can't have been 2014. I don't know. Anyway, I started making videos properly when I was 14. I think that's what I meant to say. So back in 2016. Um, but before that, I kind of had a blog because I was like, all great YouTubers started out with a blog. Like, Zoella had a blog, Sprinkle of Glitter. Like, they're all on the blog thing. You know, Blogspot, I think that's what it was called. Like, the Google thing. And I used to write little posts about, like, EOS lip balms, um, Maybelline baby lips um anything i was kind of using i was at that time where i was just discovering makeup but i was such a big person who was like into hair i used to do so many different hairstyles and i'd write how you do it and things like that and then i just have a youtube channel um but it wasn't really going anywhere until like i said i think i was about 14 when i really started getting into it and actually like posting properly and a bit more regularly um but yeah i had a blog beforehand which i don't think many people know about i don't even know if it's still out there i can't tell you what it's called because i don't remember my channel i don't even remember it's probably something like floral sphere because that was my old name like back in the day um but yeah, I had a blog. I actually did enjoy it, but I found it very stressful at the same time because I found it really difficult to put like the pictures in and the writing and everything. And then when you press publish, it looked a bit weird. And I also think a blog is much harder to grow in my opinion because you've actively got to be looking for something and you've got to make sure it comes up on like all the top pages. Whereas your YouTube video is a little bit easier to do that with. The final fact about me that you probably don't know is that I was on the radio when I was six years old. We had the local radio station come into my primary school and I think there was like three of us who got selected to sit on the radio and chat about the area, what was there, kind of like from a six year old's perspective, six, seven year old's perspective and um, yeah, it was pretty interesting and then it was played live on the radio, which I think was so cool. Like back in the day, you're like, oh my God, I'm on the radio and obviously back then we had to like tape it and we had like a proper tape and you can just hear me like my little squeaky voice like talking on the radio about like because we had a soft play back in the day we had the park um all those kind of things and then we we're talking about school and things like that um 
but I don't know where that tape is now. I don't think we probably have it because we don't have anything to play it on for a start. But yeah, I was on the radio. I think back then it was such a big thing, whereas now it's more like if you're on TV, I think that's probably like probably a bit better than being on the radio, especially because it's like a local thing. Um, but for a six year old, I thought that was pretty cool. And I don't think many people know that. Not sure how impressive it is, but it happened. So I thought I would tell you about that. And uh, maybe that's where my journey began. Who knows? Maybe that's what led me to becoming involved in the media industry. I don't know. But yeah, I was on the radio. I think it was really fun. I would like to do something like that again. Like, I think it was a very cool experience in how the whole thing worked. Um, but the ultimate goal obviously is to be on TV. That would be a dream I hope you enjoyed getting to know me a bit better If you did make sure to leave this video a thumbs up And if you have any more questions that you want to know the answers to about me or anything like that Leave a comment down below letting me know a fact about you. You can leave one, you can leave five It would just be really interesting to get to know you all a bit better So leave that in the comment section down below Like I said all the information about NCS and the No We Can campaign will be in the description box below And a massive thank you again to NCS for working with me on this video and if you haven't already, do hit that subscribe button down below. And yeah, I will see you all in my next video. Bye.